Our union is, over the next 14 weeks, facing maybe the biggest fight of our lives as Unite. It's a fight not just for our union or its members, it's a fight for the future of our society. A fight for the poor and the vulnerable. A fight for everyone squeezed by the crisis and the cuts and for everyone who believes that Britain has gone badly wrong and who wants to live in a fairer country. The attack on trade unions needs to be seen in the broader context of the planned assault on our society. Because the Tories are also plotting a reduction in the scope and role of the state, which even Thatcher could only have dreamed of. Taking us back to the days of the 1930s under the pretext of balancing the books. Without, of course, asking the rich or big business to con contribute. The Tories are well aware that they can only get away with this if they remove any potential opposition, the trade unions above all. They want to reduce us to the role of concerned spectators while they tear to bits every advancement that working people have secured, every protection we have built up over the years. So let me say here today to all of you, it's not going to happen. If a government resting on the backing of less than one quarter of the votes try to deny the rights of a movement of millions, we will treat that with the contempt it deserves. It will be the Tories who are discrediting democracy and the rule of law, not trade unions. So to be clear, nothing Cameron and Osborne choose to pass will make any difference to how Unite works in defence of our members. We won't be rash or foolhardy. We'll always be guided by our executive council, but yes, we will take on class law made by and for the moneyed elite. And if we are pushed outside of the law, then so be it. If Unite is ever to die, it will not die on its knees. The electorate is today poised between fear and hope. Fear is the basis of the UKIP menace. Blame someone else for all the problems, usually immigrants or foreigners, and seek refuge in an imagined past. But it is hope that is blossoming today, as we have seen in last week's magnificent election result in Greece. Labour needs to bottle some of the Syriza spirit. We need to take that spirit that anti-austerity agenda to the people here. What it doesn't need is Blairite grandees, the people who sucked the light out, life out of the last Labour government, attacking every progressive impulse like the mansion tax and saving our NHS. So I say to Peter Mandelson, Alan Milburn and John Hutton, Stick to counting your 30 pieces of silver from the bosses. <laughs> Stick to keep, keep counting that from the bosses who you've always represented and stop stabbing Labour in the back. And I say to Ed Miliband, have the courage of your own convictions and ignore these blasts from the past. Apologies. I've gone to ask our executive to provide donations to Labour's election fund totaling two and a half million pounds so far. And more will most likely be needed. I regard this as doing our duty to democracy. Let the Tories get their millions from hedge funds and from shadowy dinner clubs of big business. Our money is clean, transparent to the public, democratically sanctioned and honestly accounted for. It's the pennies of our members each week, not the ill-gotten gains of the ruling elite. 
Let them stand before the people as politicians bought and paid for by the likes of CityLink vulture John Moulton, who when he's not writing cheques for Cameron is sacking workers on Christmas Day. Our money is clean, transparent to the public, democratically sanctioned and honestly accounted for. It's the pennies of our members each week, not the ill-gotten gains of the ruling elite. There can be no doubt that Labour's commitments will make a huge difference. And there's no need to be merely mouthed or half-hearted about this. 200,000 homes a year being built by 2020, putting construction workers back to work and tackling the scandalous housing shortage. A freeze on energy prices, helping millions with their bills. An end to the hated bedroom tax, a mansion tax to help fund the NHS, the repeal of the Health and Social Care Act, and a start to rolling back health privatisation putting the top tax rate back up to 50p, addressing some of the worst anti-union laws through the Works Commission under John Monks, ending the Swedish derogation loophole, making it a criminal offence for bosses to only advertise and recruit a board for jobs in the UK, a proper inquiry into the disgraceful practice of blacklisting, calling a stop to zero-hour contracts, ending bogus employment, self-employment, ta taking action to significantly increase opportunities for our youth to take up high quality apprenticeships. Pretty impressive. All these policies will make a real difference to ordinary families and will provide a platform for tackling the crippling inequalities in our society. I'm appealing to each and every one of you to step up to the plate. Get behind your union and its political strategy and get behind a Labour victory in May. Go out on the knockers, staff the phone banks, mobilise your members in the workplaces and in the communities. Answer the party's call. Do not stand aside from this battle or let any doubts and reservations paralyse you. We are now facing the fight of our lives. <laughs>